Family Theater presents Anne Blythe, Jeff Chandler, and Betty Lynn. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Flight from Home by True Boardman, starring Jeff Chandler and Anne Blythe. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Betty Lynn. Thank you, Tony Rafferty. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone one's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Flight from Home, starring Anne Blythe as Mary and Jeff Chandler as Jim. <laughs> Hello? Mary? Oh, yes, Nora. We're just leaving. We'll be there in less than half an hour to take you to the train. All right, Nora. I'm all ready. Take your time. Still packing? No. No, as a matter of fact, I'm writing a letter. A letter that I shall probably never send. Goodbye, Nora. Dear Jim, I don't pretend even to myself that this letter can make any difference. What we said last night before you left was final and definite. I know that. Within an hour, Nora and Charlie are coming to drive me to the train that will take me home to Cleveland. Home. Funny that after six years, I should suddenly be thinking again of Cleveland as home. After all, what does one do while one waits those last minutes before she says goodbye to a lifetime? I don't know. I only know I feel impelled to put it down in black and white. I'm sitting now by the front window that faces on the river. The day is perfect and you can see all the way to the hills across the valley. But as I look out now into the garden, one object holds my eyes and my thoughts. It's something you built for me with your own hands and showed me so proudly the day we arrived here from our honeymoon. The day that was really the beginning. Okay, Mrs. Matthews, your mansion awaits. All out. Jim, this is the Star Island place. You don't tell me. Oh, Jim, we had agreed on that little house near the university. That place on Elm Street. That shack for the wife of the man who in two years will be head of the university research lab? Couldn't think of it. Now, come on. Oh, Jim, now we agreed. We talked it all over and decided... And I decided you should have a place worthy of you. Uh, uh, Mary, Mary, wait. Before we go inside, there's something here in the garden you didn't see before. What? What have you done? In here. Well? Oh, Jim. Jim, darling. Well, you, you see, the, the house was already built and furnished. And, well, I, I wanted the place to have something I'd put into it myself, just for you. What better for a girl I couldn't even get to see for the first three months I knew her unless I went to church four <laughs> times a week? You! I went to church to see you. What do you mean? Your mother told me you practically lived down at that church before you ever saw Jim Matthews. If I didn't already love you more than any man deserves, this shrine you built for me would... Oh, Jim, I'm so happy I'm scared. Oh, hey. Take it easy. You know where I got the idea for this shrine? The trip I took around the world on an island in the Indies I visited. Each family has its own shrine outside the house. They do? Uh -huh, always. It guarantees every newly married couple fair weather, good crops, and at least 14 children. 14? Well, uh, 13. <laughs> Come on, let's go inside. Oh, darling. Huh? Before we go in, could we dedicate our shrine? Oh, it has been. The moment it was finished by, by a fellow I know. What did this fellow say? Well, he said something like, Thanks, Lord, for what I know is going to be a fine marriage. 
Thanks for Mary understanding about my work and my taking the job at the lab here because it means more freedom and authority. Even though I could earn more money for her somewhere else. Thanks for this house. And above all, may it be blessed with children. May every one of them look exactly like their mother. That was all. Okay, did I leave anything out? You have anything to add? Just one thing. Thanks, Lord, for Jim. And help me to be the wife he deserves. And if it be your will, let there be children all just like Jim. Amen. Now, let's go inside. Yeah. That was the beginning, Jim. Such a rich and warm and happiness-filled beginning. There was fun for us in those first months that so quickly became years, Jim. Such fun that I... I wonder now how and when we first began to lose it. I only know that suddenly we were aware that there were two shadows across our life together. We had no child, and it began to seem we weren't ever going to have one. That was one shadow. The other, you felt you had received no recognition at the lab for all the work you'd done. And then, just before our fourth anniversary, there was a night when it all seemed perfect again. You don't have to help me with these, Jim. You're tired. Who's tired? I only played seven sets. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Say, uh, what do you think of the new man, the fellow I played singles with? Mr. Michaels? Mm -hmm. All right. Why? He's the old man's new pet, former student of his. So? So, some people think the old man might decide to make, uh, make him director of the research lab when old Professor Kenny retires this fall. Oh, Jim, he couldn't. You've worked hard for that directorship. You deserve it. <laughs> Don't worry. The old man knows that. In fact, he, he said something about it this afternoon. Looks good. Jim, what would you do if Michaels did get the appointment over your head? Nothing. Just blow the roof off the lab and the old man, that's all. <laughs> and I'd help you. <laughs> oh, by the way, I went to see Dr. Peters this morning. Oh, why? Oh, nothing important. Just to make sure whether or not we were having a baby. We are. Oh, hand me that platter there. Here. Where's this young Michael's from? Pittsburgh. How soon? December, maybe January. Uh -huh. Oh, he's handsome. Yeah. Uh, Doc say you're all right? Oh. Perfect. Well, you know, you know, it's funny. People make such a to-do over this baby business. In the movies, the girl always has moonlight and soft music when she tells her husband, and he's supposed to faint or something. <laughs> no, no, that's when it's born. Oh, here's the platter. Careful. Yeah, well, and uh, you take us. We're, we're washing dishes. A matter of fact, just this conversation. Nobody excited? No, nobody nervous? No, nobody... Oh, Jim, Jim, look out! I... Oh! Mary. Mary, darling. Oh, Jim. Jim, I'm so happy. This time it's really true. Thank heaven it's really true. In those months that follow, Jim... Our life had purpose again, and it was beautiful and complete. And you were as proud as if you personally invented the idea of parenthood. And then that night, that one horrible, unforgettable night. Oh, my darling, if that storm could only have happened a week before or later or any time but when it did. But it didn't, Jim. It happened then. What was for both of us perhaps the most critical moment of our lives. Yes, Dr. Peters. Oh, of course you're right. She shouldn't drive in the storm. Oh, I'm, I'm positive she does. Yes, right here. Here, he wants to talk to you. Here, Mary. He's definitely sending another doctor. Uh, hello, doctor. A fine time I pick. Helpful, Mary. Oh, of course I understand. You're right, it is safer in this storm. And as long as you recommend this other doctor... Just so he makes it in time. No, no, I haven't been able to find Jim anywhere. I'm worried he should have been home two hours ago. 
but at least I'm not alone. I called Nora and she came right over. Oh, I'll be all right. Oh, and don't forget, you bet me it's a girl. I still say a boy. Oh, Nora. Hold on, honey. Hold on. That one was 18 minutes. Oh, Nora, the front door. Jim, is that you? Ah. Hi, Mary. Hi, Nora. Jim, darling, where have you been? I've... Jim. I've been celebrating all by myself all afternoon. Michael's got that assignment as director of the lab. <laughs> Pretty boy Michael's now my new boss. Hooray! Oh, Jim. Jim. Jim, Mary's needed you, the babies. And what about it? I'm all right now that you're here. We call Dr. Peters. Yeah. He can't leave the hospital, so he's sending a doctor here. What? He doesn't want me driving to the hospital in the storm. Oh, that's, that's ridiculous. Of course you're going to the hospital. There's time, isn't there? I, I suppose so, but Dr. Oh, Peters... Oh, Jim, that's crazy. What? The doctor specifically said... I say she's going to the hospital. We'll have no home delivery with some doctor we don't know. No, no, sir, you're going to have the best, Mary, you hear me? Jim Matthews' wife is having the best there is, and no storm or anything else is going to prevent it. Please slow down. I'm sure we'll get there in time, and I'm all right, but please take it easy. I know what I'm doing. <gasps> oh, Jim. Are you sure I shouldn't drive? I can, Jim. Don't be ridiculous. I'm terribly sorry about the appointment. You should have had it. Jim. Oh, Jim, please Mary, slow down. You please be quiet. I had a few drinks. Sure, well, what of it? Stop sounding as if I'm... Uh, Jim, look out! That huh? truck! You... Jim! <laughs> Mary will be all right, Jim. But the child... I'm sorry, there was nothing I could do. I see. You should never have tried to drive in through that storm. Do you suppose I don't know that now? Doctor, what about other children for us later? There are many children already born who need adoption, son. I'm sorry. You better go into Mary. Mary. Oh, Mary. Jim, we lost. <laughs> Our baby's dead. Dr. Peters couldn't save him. <clears throat> you must know this. Except for the accident, you both would have been all right. Except for the accident. Jim, Jim, listen to me. I'll let you rest now. I'm... Oh, Jim, darling, wait. Listen. <clears throat> oh, Jim. <laughs> But you didn't wait, and you didn't listen. Then or in the many times in the weeks and months when I tried to talk to you about that night. Our marriage went on, but actually it was no marriage at all. We were two people who lived in a single house a thousand miles apart. We both changed, Jim. I'm afraid I grew a little bitter in my unhappiness, and you? Well, other people too began to worry about you. There was the day Professor Ahrens came to see me from the university. The old man, as you've always called him. And I assure you, Mrs. Matthews, I try never to interfere with the private lives of my staff members, but I'm worried about Jim. He was the best project man I had. That's why I kept him free, unhampered by staff responsibilities. But lately, well, I've tried to talk to him, and his only response is that he'll resign if I'm not satisfied. Now, I don't want that, Mrs. Matthews. I want Jim, but I want the old Jim. Not a man who brings his mind to the laboratory, but whose heart he has left somewhere else. What could I tell Professor Ahrens? That I felt the same way about our life at home. Could I tell him about the wall that had come between us that was evident so often now in the daily course of our lives? And then, Jim, I thought perhaps I'd found an answer. That afternoon, three months ago, I persuaded you to go with Nora and Charlie to the Children's Foundling Society home on the pretense that they were thinking of adopting a child. 
And when we came home that night, you were more yourself than I'd seen you in months. There was one child in particular had impressed you. Hey, Mary, did you notice that older little girl, the, the one with the turned up nose and the long yellow hair? Wasn't her name Joan? Yeah, yeah that's it. Any chance of Nora and Charlie taking her? Did you like her? Me? Sure. Well, how can you not like a kid in a spot like that? Well, I mean, did you like Joan particularly? Did you, Jim? So that's it. That's it. Nora and Charlie had no intention of adopting a kid. No, Jim. I've thought and I've prayed about it. I honestly think that a child is the answer. Maybe our life is as it is because it's too shallow. Yeah, I've, I've thought of that too. Oh, at least let me investigate. Let me talk to them at the home. Let's start to think about it. What is there to think about? Go ahead. Oh, Jim, darling. And the first thing we'll do is cut that kid's hair. <laughs> Three months. Three months leading to yesterday. Three months of interviews with the adoption board and visits to the home and fixing the den over into a room for Joan. Three months of planning. Three months of living again. And then yesterday. Yesterday, the finale to it all. Little Joan, happy, eager, and, and frightened all at the same time in her new home. And, and it's not that I'm exactly afraid. But I just never slept in a room by myself. Anyway, not since I remember. Oh, I understand, Joan, darling. And until you get used to it, I know, I'll come in each night and lie down with you till you're asleep. How's that? You can tell me stories. Oh, that'll be fine, Mother. Oh, should I call you Mother or Mary? Whichever you wish, dear. It'll just work out. And what about... Jim? Oh, we'll talk to him about it. Are you sure he'll be glad to see me? Joan, Jim and I talked you over for a long time. He'll be glad. Why did you take me instead of one of the teensy kids? Most folks who came to the home took little babies. I'd about given up hope on account I'm so old. Age had nothing to do with it, Joan. You were the little girl our home needed to make it complete. I'm sure glad. Mary? Oh, there he is. I'm in here, Jim, in the den. Well, Mary, I wanted to... Hello, Mr. Matthews. I'm here. Mary, didn't you get my wire? Your wire? I know the phone's been out, and you know how they are about delivery. Well, Mary, I've got to talk to you. Joan, you run outside for a little while and play in the yard. I'll call you for dinner soon. All right. I'll stay where you can call me. Well, what did the telegram say, Jim? Well, you must have gotten it. You went ahead anyway. Why well, didn't... Went ahead. So you changed your mind? No, I made it up. I had time to think during this trip. I decided once and for all. I'm late now because I stopped at the lab. I've resigned. I'm leaving here, Mary. Here. It's a deed to the house and power of attorney if you want to sell it before all the arrangements are worked out. I left most of the money in the joint account. Here's the book. You seem to have thought of everything. I'm sorry about little Joan, but... Well, perhaps you'll keep her yourself. You know that's impossible. This adoption idea was crazy for us, and you know it. More is wrong with our marriage than not having a child in the house. What's wrong is wrong with me. Well, if you know that, why don't you do something about Your it? Your trouble is, Mary, you're still in love with a dream. Well, it was a dream. I'm what I am now, so let me go. All right, go on. Run, Jim, and keep on running all the rest of your life. From me, from your job, and from yourself. Oh, Jim, Jim, if I could only make you see. Do you think I don't? You want the whole truth, Mary? We've never faced that, have we? Well, we will now. Two years ago, I killed our baby. No, I Jim. I killed our baby and I made it certain that we'd never have another. Well, try living with that in the back of your mind, Mary. Take it to work with you day after day. See it there in the eyes of your wife every time you look at it. That's not try true. Try lying in bed night after night, reliving that crash a thousand times. You there in the street in the rain, not even crying in your pain. Just saying over and over to me, it's all right, Jim. I'll be all right and the baby will live. But the baby didn't live. Oh, Jim. Why can't it be simple? Why can't I just put my arms around you and say, I love you, my darling. I'll always love you. And let that be all the answer. But it isn't. 
Our only chance is for me to hurt you even more. No, Mary, I'm going now. Listen to me. Your real feeling of guilt is not only because you were drunk that night and we had an accident. The real guilt you feel is in back of that, back of why you left the lab that day and started drinking at all. Your pride was hurt, Jim, and that's hard for you. It's hard for all of us. The one thing you can't take is a blow to your own ego. If you have any sin, it's that one, Jim. But do you think you're alone in such a sin? And the answer is to face it, not to run. Find humility, my darling. Humility in the sight of God. And stop running away. We read a poem once together. You said it was your favorite. The Hound of Heaven. Remember it, Jim? I fled him down the nights and, and down, down the, the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I fled him down the labyrinth and ways of my own mind. And in the mist of tears, I hid from him. You're that man, Jim. You're fleeing from your own faith and from your own forgiveness. Some things are beyond forgiveness. There is forgiveness if you'll just break through this wall you've built and accept it, Jim. Go now, if you must, but go to find yourself. Walk. Walk as long and as far as necessary. But get back to God, Jim. Pray. Humbly and with an open heart. Pray as I've prayed these last months. Oh, Jim, the golden door is open if you'll just look up and see it. And walk through. It's no use, Mary. I tell you, it's no use. Jim! Oh, Jim! Jim! Oh, dear God. Help him in this hour. And help me to live without him. If that is your will. And so it ended, Jim. You turned and walked out into the night, and it was over. And there it is, the whole story. I said that putting it in a letter might help me understand. It doesn't. I only know that I still love you as I shall never love another human being. And that when you went out that door, a part of myself went with you. What's left, I don't care very much about. There's a car in the driveway, Jim, and that means Nora and Charlie are here for me. So I must finish this quickly and... Is that you, Nora? I'll be just a minute. I'm finishing my letter. Nora? Hello, Mother. Joan. Joan, honey, but how did you get... I didn't run away and come back here, if that's what you mean. Somebody brought me. Somebody... Who? He says he wants to talk to you, please, outside. He says you'll know where. Of course. Of course I do. Hello, Mary. Jim. I, I got as far as the train last night, but I kept hearing those words. I started walking. I, I must have walked all night. You were right. I fled him down the nights and down the days. All of a sudden, there, there was no place I could go. Once the walls I built were down, oh, I... Oh, darling. Mary? I... Oh, yes, Joan. Joan, darling, come in here. Oh, can I? I mean, may I? Of course you may. This is our family shrine. Joan, you're part of the family now. You belong here. <laughs> This is Betty Lowe again. 
What makes a house a home? Go ahead. Try to count the things that make your house home. You might think of the smell of cooking, the colors used in your interior decoration, lighting of the rooms, the fireplace, and even the comfort you find in your favorite chair. But take stock again in a slightly different manner. Try this. Imagine it with only yourself in it. With your imagination, remove the sounds of beloved voices and footsteps. Remove the very consciousness of the presence of your loved ones. And try to feel just for an instant that you are completely alone in your house. That there is no one for you to share it with. You see, it's the family, not the house, that is important. Love and unity in the family, the warmth and comfort of the family, are among the greatest gifts God gives to us. Family prayer is the means through which we ensure these wonderful gifts for ourselves and for our children. Daily family prayer unites the family in the spirit of love, while the prayers themselves assure us of God's continued blessings. For as long as you invite God, the creator of family life, to take his rightful place in the circle of your family, your home will never be just a house. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Flight from Home, starring Anne Blythe and Jeff Chandler. Betty Lynn was your hostess. Others in our cast were Martha Shaw, Norman Field, Michael Hayes, and Norma Jean Nilsson. The script was written by True Boardman, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present Danny Thomas and John Lund in The Juggler of Our Lady. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.